Hi, today we're going to talk about famous scientists and their views on motion and how we got to the knowledge that we have today. We're going to start with Aristotle. Aristotle was born in 384 BC. You don't have to remember the dates. I just want you to know it was a long time ago. And he said there were two kinds of motion. There was natu natural motion and violent motion. Natural motion was what things want to do naturally. Heavy things want to fall. Light things want to rise. That's why smoke goes up and a rock falls down. According to Aristotle, it was natural. Natural was either straight up or straight down, except for the sun and the stars and the other planets. They were going in a circular motion around the earth because that's what we believed at the time. They're going in a circular motion around the earth and that was also natural. Violent motion was opposed motion. It was imparted motion. It was motion that was given to something as a result of something else. So a boat moves on the ocean because the wind forces it, and the wind is one of those imposed forces. Um, a tug of war, the rope is moved because people are pulling on the rope, and that is imposed motion. So violent motion is not natural. It's imparted to objects. It's given to objects. And it's imparted by a push or a pull, which we now call a force. But Aristotle didn't call it that. So that was what Aristotle and the scientists of his day believed. Let's jump ahead a little bit to Copernicus. And let's turn Copernicus the right way around. There we go. Um, Copernicus was born, uh, was around a lot later than uh, Aristotle was. And he came up with some very revolutionary ideas. So revolutionary that if he went public with it, he would have been in big trouble. So he kept it a secret and he said, it's not that the Earth is the center of the universe and things revolve around it, center of our solar system, things revolve around it, but rather the Earth and the planets move around the sun. That was unheard of. And he did his studies, he was an astronomer, he did his studies in secret and he kept his information secret because he didn't want to get in trouble. His very first book was published on the day he died. So we wouldn't get in trouble for this. But this laid a really interesting foundation for a guy named Galileo. Now Galileo is the guy that coined the term force and said force was a push or a pull. He actually gave it the name force. But he said there's this thing called friction. It's a special force and it acts between materials that touch one another as they move past one another. So if things are moving past one another and they're touching, friction is in place. But the most important thing that he said, in my opinion, was that only if friction is present is a force needed to keep an object moving. So when you're a kid and you have your little Hot Wheel and you roll it on the carpet, it doesn't go as far as if you roll it on your tile floor because of friction. But if there was no friction and you rolled that car, it would roll forever. And that's what Galileo said. That was totally changing the way everybody thought about things. He got in a little trouble because he said, I believe what Copernicus said was right. And he was under house arrest for a while. So he had a little time to do some experimentation and some thinking. See, he was concerned with what was happening. He wasn't as concerned with how things happen, but really what's going on. And so he did a lot of experimentation. So let's talk about one of his experiments. Okay, so he took a ball and rolled it down a ramp. And what he noticed was when the ball rolled down the ramp, it picked up speed. And when it rolled up the ramp, it actually slowed down. And as he got smoother and smoother pieces of material to roll his, the ball down, he found something interesting. One of the things he found was where you start is about the same height as where it ends. Not quite. This is a little bit lower. But where it starts and where it ends is about the same. It gets to about the same height. That was true whether you had a relatively shallow slope or a, a higher slope. Wherever it started from, it would get to about this. Now it doesn't stop here, you know, it rolls back down. But I mean, that's the maximum height it obtained. And he noticed as it went down here, like I said before, it got faster. And as it went up here, it got slower. So he started thinking to himself, I wonder if I could get something that was so smooth that it wouldn't slow things down at all. It would just, it would just keep moving. 
So his question was, if I have a ball and I roll it down here and I roll it across the floor and I never go back up and there's no friction, What's the final position of that ball? What's the highest position it's going to reach? When's it going to stop? It's not. In the absence of friction and other outside forces, it won't stop. It'll just keep going. Revolutionary at the time. And even sometimes for us today, we go, really? Because our world is so grounded in gravity and friction that we can't imagine what it would be like to not have those things. So he said, in the absence of friction, a moving ball continues to move. It doesn't come to a natural rest. Was he talking about what Aristotle said with natural motion and violent motion? Maybe. Because he showed that even heavy objects would go back up, and Aristotle said they wouldn't. In the absence of friction, a moving ball continues to move. It does not come to a natural stop. He called that inertia, I-N-E-R-T-I-A. And what inertia is, is it's a property of a body, it's a property of an object that um, says how much it's going to resist changing its state of motion. It doesn't want to change. It wants to stay the same. If it's in motion, it wants to keep being in motion. If it's at rest, it wants to keep being at rest. Inertia is the property of a body to resist change in its state of motion. It wants to keep doing what it's been doing. 